one of the greatest times of tribulation or danger, peril, I don't know what you want to call it, in the history of the people of God was at the Red Sea. You all know the account of the Red Sea? Yes? Okay, dokey. Here, here they are. God has sent Moses into the land and by his mighty hand, by the power of God, incredible, mind-boggling power, he gets the Pharaoh to release them that they can go, be set free, and worship him. So God leads them. Where does God lead them? God leads them to the Red Sea. An impassable, impossible barrier between them and the promise of God. Is that not what it looked like? So what did they do? They mumbled and grumbled and groaned and complained. Now you know why it says it's nothing new under the sun. Because that's what we do all too often. And I think that the, most of the people of God today, and uh, trust me there's exceptions, I'm painting with a broad brush here. When we get into bad situations, situations we don't like, situations that are attacked by the devil. Well, by the way, that was, was that an attack by the devil? Let's see, it was God who led them there. It was God who hardened the heart of Pharaoh to make them come after. It was God who spoke the Red Sea into existence with the word. This whole deal is God. And you want to know something? You don't get into any situation where the whole deal isn't God. Because he had purpose. doesn't matter what it looks like to you. It's God. Because he has you in the palm of his hand. He is leading you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. If you lose sight of that, you'll think, oh boy, the devil's getting me. The devil ain't getting you. God's setting him up for a fall. There's a battle going on, and God's setting him up for a fall. Because the devil is too stupid to understand that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And every time he starts a fight with you, he's going to lose. So if you found yourself at the Red Sea today, would you grumble and complain and say, send me back to the world, send me back? It was not so bad back there. Do we get to a place where we don't understand? And I think they'd have a church meeting. A lot of Christians get together and have a church meeting. And they would vote with the best intention. Let's get together and build a bridge. And they would have architectural renderings done of this bridge. Because that's good for raising funds. And they would work and they would say, well, God gave us our two hands. God gave us our strength. And they would start building a bridge across the Red Sea. And even if they did it, you want to know something? They would have lost. Because the Pharaoh would have come right across the bridge after him. This is what Abraham did. When he took matters into his own hands to make the promise of God come true in his life. Okay, you may want to write this one down because it's important. God does not need your help. He is our help. He doesn't need you to build a bridge to fix the problem. He doesn't need you to do anything except trust in Him, praise Him, rejoice in Him, give Him thanks, and stand by and see the salvation of God. Oh, that's what Moses said, yeah. Oh, but you, you can say, oh no, we don't believe in works. We're a people of faith. So you go down to the Red Sea and start looking up the river and confessing a ferry boat. Oh God, we're trusting you. Send us a ferry boat. Send us a ferry boat. Oh God, I'm claiming it. I'm... And you'd say, well, I'm walking in faith. No, you're not, silly. That's not faith. That's not faith. That's what so many big church preachers do today. It's positive thinking. It's you think something up and start confessing it and expect God to obey your will. It is right. Faith, where does faith come from? Hearing. Hearing by the word of God. If you did not hear God say it to you, you have no reason to confess it. Now it's positive thinking, leaning on your own understanding, and you're just going to get in trouble. But I'm going to tell you this. If you've heard God say it to you, stand on that rock. Stand on that rock, and don't you be moved an inch. Because God will show up. And God will show up in time. God always shows up in time. Even if it's like Lazarus, four days dead, God will show up in time. 
God will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always answer you. He will always take care of you. It is His promise because you are His beloved. And He will ransom you. He will rescue you. You need to confess it. You need to tell people this. The world is a mess out there. There's reason in the world. If you're not saved, you ought to be scared to death. You ought to be walking in fear. You ought to be trembling. You have good reason to be. That world is a mess. If your knees start to knock because of a terrible situation, use that as the rhythm to sing your new song. Not pity, not, 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 not. Let, them, let them really go and start doing a dance unto the Lord. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're in public. I don't care if you're at work. I don't care where you are. Start to sing that song. Start to give praise to God. Start to give thanks to God. Start to believe that He and He alone is in control of your life because you are precious in His sight.